dang it. Today on Top Player Mouse, we take a look at the mind-boggling ballistic machinist dumbbell slugs. Tim originally designed these slugs to purposely tumble through the air. However, he stumbled on a design that seems to defy most people's understanding of aerodynamics and even physics. Here we see a couple of Tim's early designs. If I were to just hand these things to you, there's little chance you'd be able to identify them as shotgun slugs. And if I told you these were shotgun slugs, you would tell me there's no chance those would fly straight through the air. After all, they're neither nose heavy nor are they tail heavy. They're perfectly balanced. These don't have an aerodynamic shape. They lack fletchings or fins for stabilization. And unlike a bullet, these do not require a spin for stability, believe it or not. This is the factory loaded version we'll be using today. Now you might notice that these have a white rifling band on there. The new versions use O-rings. This reduces costs, makes things simpler, and as you will see, it actually solves a, a very minor ballistic problem because the white rifling bands actually discard and that creates its own problem. Since the O-rings will stay attached to the slug, that will make the slug even more predictable and even more accurate. Let's roll that wonderful bean footage. All right, Talf later, folks. We got some stuff here from Tim Hamilton, ballistic oh. machinist. Steel dumbbells. These are the slugs that you would never guess they would fly yeah. straight. But essentially, they're kind of like a Diablo shape in a way, you know? Yeah. It's perfectly balanced. There's no heavy or light end. We're going to demonstrate them through a smooth bore, through rifled barrel. You know, Tim says that they're uh, for smooth and or rifled barrels. So we're going to try a few out of each one and see what works. Barrel. Let's go rifle barrel first. Okay, rifle barrel first. I got two of them laying here, and that's the one I loaded. <laughs> that's all right. All right, rifle barrel. 1705. Ah, it's got a good thump. <laughs> I bet. Now with spin stabilization, no problem, the slug is very stable. You can make almost any shape, including the shape of an awkward bullet, fly straight through the air with spin stabilization. And I, I believe it hit up, up in here, and I think it went through the Kevlar. I mean, that's some funky Kevlar, but that was a uh, I believe a pretty clean area of the Kevlar still. Now that's it's not unusual for a hard metal projectile to go through Kevlar. Well, it's definitely not in the vest. Yeah, there's this wasn't here before. That's usually a a telltale sign that it pulled through. Yeah. Yeah. So that went right through them. Let's see. Yeah, I bet it, it that thing was going at a high 1,700 feet per second. He loaded those a little hot. Yeah. That's good. Good recoil? It def yeah, it had definitely a good thump. Yeah, it went, uh, it penetrated. <laughs> Here we go. Dead center on the seam. Dang it! Wow. Like a gong. 1753. Now this is my point of aim. Of course I'm sighted in at about 50 yards and we're, what, 20 yards? Yes. All right, there's our entrance. Pretty much dead center, just a little bit low. Yep. And here's our exit. <laughs> clean in and clean out, just a little oblong there. A little computer Mac store hard drive, everyone's favorite hard drive, right? Yeah. <laughs> Never failed anyone. Let's see what we can do with this. There we go. Oh, look at that, he even stood it up. That takes special ninja skills. Not the first time I've been stood up. It's almost like flipping a coin and the coin landing on its edge. That's pretty funny. Now we brought out 10 of these slugs and we shot all 10 and we're going to show you all 10 shots. And I think that's the most honest way to demonstrate something like this. 
Uh, according to Amos here, you know, I probably pulled it a little bit or pushed it, however you want to call it. Nice clean entrance. No problem no through problem. all that junk. We'll, we'll try to hit a solid spot. Yeah, the lead plate, but I have to repeat this because I just forgot to turn the camera. <laughs> Got a lead plate. It's been shot up, but he's just going to find a, a new spot to hit it. We're going to try. Otherwise, there's no lead plate. So our <laughs> choice was to shoot up, beat up lead plate or nothing. Wow, broken in half. <laughs> Now viewers always express their disappointment with us if we forget to shoot the lead plate, so I figured this would be better than nothing. But we did shoot an undamaged lead plate last year using the, the beta version of these slugs. So if you're really curious of what it does to an undamaged lead plate, go back and watch that video. Okay, we got a special target today. What do we got? A <laughs> uh, steel toe boot. From Matt, Matt B. B 2099, believe it or not. I've never been given the boot on a YouTube channel, but <laughs> let's see. This goes out to our Slav friend, Matt V 2099, at almost 20 yards. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm head over heels in love with that one. <laughs> All right. That was a good shot. Our dot was down a little bit low, the steel ends right here and our dot was here yeah i, I so put I, the dot a little low so i raised it up a little bit so we'd hit the toe a little more solid yeah so you get some sun in there and get a pinky in oh yeah oh, yeah sharp edges it, it looked like it uh it cracked that steel toe quite a ways up too yeah i think i don't think he would have <laughs> these are monstrous yeah. slugs man i love them Gosh. those are nice and we actually got an exit wound. Little tiny hole out doesn't, there. Doesn't, yeah, it doesn't look very big because this is rubber. Yeah. But there was no damage in the bottom of this when we started. Oh, man, that's awesome. That wrecked that toe. Look at that. Looked like a, looked like a mortar hit it or something. Yeah, full pass through. Wow. Very cool. Not a good home toe defense. <laughs> Now we're going to, he swapped barrels out. Yeah. What, so. What's your setup now? Uh, same gun, uh, just a 18-inch uh, smooth bore. No choke, no nothing. Because Tim says these are for smooth or rifled bores. Yeah, you know, and like we were saying earlier, if you could get a universal slug that doesn't require rifling, but works with rifling and smooth bore or whatever, you got to reunivers, you know, you increase your... Uh, you know, yeah, your customer base. Your is, customer base. There you go. Yeah. And also, what will there be a velocity difference between a smooth bore and a rifled barrel? A lot of people have asked me that. I'd, I'd love uh, to find out. That's a good question. If we don't get an error. Same point of aim, dead on. So we have 1671. Yeah, that's a little slower. We'll see if that trend continues. Not too bad, it dropped a little bit, but our velocity dropped too with that smooth bore you, on it. Like we were saying before, you may have different barrel harmonics with that shorter barrel right. and all that, you know. Very clean hole nice though. clean hole. And we saw a nice bright flash on that one too. Now it's easy to stabilize a slug using angular momentum using a rifled barrel. It's a heck of a lot harder to get the same results using no spin at all. Little tiny aluminum block. The zero percent lower. <laughs> I'm ready when you are. All right, we're gonna 
gonna hold this straight on uh, dead on the target so we got a good comparison okay so you can land it right on that orange dot Wow <laughs> So he's a little low and left, Californian. Look at that slice though. Just slice that aluminum. That aluminum's tough. Pretty much got it right on the line there. Okay, we're gonna go back to the computer hard drive. He hit it. So you were left again. Yeah. I think the rifling makes him drift to the right a little bit, to be it honest with you. I'm not sure, you know. Spin. Just like a baseball. Yeah. Throw a curve in it. This one, uh, this this hole was already here. This was my point of aim. It felt good when I pulled the trigger, but again, it shot to the left. Yep. Flip it around. Oh, yeah. Finish that sucker off. At least you hit it, you know. <laughs> That's half the battle. We can see the white rifling band hanging up on the slug. That'll actually influence the accuracy a little bit. That's why I think the O-rings will be an improvement and give you more accuracy. Okay, we got Matt V299's five pound copper ingot. Worth $2,500 according to Matt, if you wanna believe that. Tiny copper ingot, that's pretty small from that range. You think you can do it? We're going to find out. Okay, that's confidence for you. Okay, I'm ready. Heck yeah! 1667 on our on the Patreon chronograph. Left and low again. Left and low, and I even compensated a little bit for that one because they were shooting to the left. I just wanted to see the damage. Look at that. But, yeah. Scraped off a few pennies there. Yeah. No, I didn't see any sparks. Well, according to Matt V, though, that, that's got to be dollars worth. Yeah, that's a $2,500 ingot of copper, he yeah. says. <laughs> Pretty cool. Nice chunk out of that thing. You couldn't do that again if you tried. Did it on the aluminum and the copper. You meant to do that, right? Yeah, trying to split the slug. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going for about a almost 40 yard shot. Smooth bore. Last round. Last round. Five out of a smooth bore, five out of rifled. That's been shooting a little bit to the left, but I'm gonna stay dead center in the sternum. Okay. Let's see if we can hit him. All right. There we go, Doug. I think it went high. You didn't hit the vest, but it hit him in the probably the sternum or some. Well, that did better than the close range. At least it was uh, on target. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to hit him about here. Center of the sternum. Yeah, you just gonna have to side in for the type of barrel you're using, the type of. Yeah, you know. well, we can't retune the barrels for the sights for every different. Yeah, it, different it, kind it, of that's shot. that's the problem with long range stuff. It's it's subjective. There's a lot of variables there. Um, you know, is it the shooter? Is it just the barrel harmonics? Is it whatever? But we'll we'll see on high speed how stable that slug was. You know. But still, that's in the kill zone at that range. Yeah, yeah. If this was it or this one. I think this was it here, though. Because he's got an exit wound about straight back from it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that looks like a new hole there. Right there. Okay. Poor Doug. <laughs> he's holding up well, though. I'll tell you that. And there you have it, the steel dumbbell round. 
Definitely a universal slug that you can shoot out of a rifled barrel or a smoothbore. There's a link in the description if you're interested in buying these. Also, keep in mind he's also selling those brass pellets which were phenomenal, impressive slugs. If you have any theories of why these things fly straight as an arrow through the air, I'd love to hear it in the comment section. We currently have 631 Patreon supporters. I want to thank all you guys for giving me hope that we can continue to do this in the future. We're in much better shape now than we were at the beginning of the year.